through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows ekphrastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 163. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're talking about female leads mm -hmm. in honor of Brave, the Pixar film, which has a female lead for the first yes, time. Yes, it does. And co-directed by a woman mm -hmm. for the first time, so yeah. two thumbs up for that at least. Yes. Unfortunately, as many people can talk about more elegantly than us, females, women, however you want to phrase it, have yeah. been much underutilized in yes. film history. What's that? The Bechdel test? The, yes. The test that's uh, to see whether or not in a movie two women have a conversation with each other that isn't about a man, and like for only 48% move of major mainstream movies pass that test, which yeah. is pretty sad. Which is sad. <laughs> I mean, that's just not even main characters, but just at all. We're not. So. We're not. We're not gonna. We're not doing yeah. commentary today in well, terms of that. There might be a little bit, a little bit snide. <laughs> do I ever not do commentary, Spencer? Go on. Yeah, you're a little snide. Yeah, I'm a little um, snide. But <laughs> we're mostly doing an appreciation here yes. of some of the great female roles True, that have yes. been out there. There are many that we're not going to be able to touch on. There's so many. Yes. There are a lot out there yeah, that thankfully. would be worth discussing, <laughs> yes. And we would love to hear the ones that mm -hmm. you like, so please let us know yeah. those at the website. Mm -hmm. But we're going to start way back in the day. There's several people that we just absolutely have to highlight mm -hmm. one of which is Catherine Hepburn yes one of the most prolific female actors mm -hmm. ever in the history of almost prolific actors period yeah, definitely and we're going to talk about the Philadelphia story yes with Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart that's right yeah boom boom love triangle yeah but you know she is sort of the prism on the top of the mm -hmm. love triangle mm -hmm. this this is a story of a woman who's getting married yes who gets in contact again with her ex-husband mm -hmm. uh as he's trying to introduce her to a reporter mm. basically who's wanting to cover it mm -hmm. it's sort of a weird situation mm -hmm. Though she's sort of pressured into letting him be involved with the wedding because of her coverage of her father, That's which right. she yes. doesn't really want information to leak out, mm -hmm. so she kind of concedes and lets him mm -hmm. come in, and ultimately a, like, I believe it's a love quadrangle or whatever you want yeah, to get into, I, because yeah, it's her, her fiancé, yeah. her ex-husband, yes. uh, Cary Grant, and the reporter, Jimmy Stewart. Mm -hmm. And her what's her fiance John Howard? Ah, yes, that's right. And you know, ultimately, it's. I mean, I I hate to sort of be promoting a a love triangle mm. <laughs> with a woman involved in it, but Catherine Hepburn is so fantastic as oh, an yeah. actress. And when you're pairing her with a couple other great actors and Jimmy Stewart and Cary Grant, it's just sort of a magical... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's any number of films we could have talked about with her in terms of, you know, uh, we did a round table on Holiday yes. with her and Cary Grant mm -hmm. as well. And it's, it's the thing that's amazing about her is she really plays the strong female lead Definitely. very well. And this is yeah. coming off of a period where she was considered to be box office poison. Mm, and so really? I believe she was involved in getting the rights... To this movie huh. to sort of retake control of her career yeah and this is directed by george cooker who also directed holiday mm. he directed uncredited involved in directing gun with the wind and wizard of oz wow it's back in the day the gaslight star is born my fair lady so wow. one of the most prolific directors in film history she was nominated for best actress hmm. in a leading role lost to uh ginger rogers for kitty foyle Sadly, uh, of course, Jimmy Stewart won. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very amazing film. Do oh, you yeah. have any specific recollections of this film? Uh, I just remember that, you know, it's pretty rare in a Cary Grant film or a film that even has and Cary Jimmy Grant. Stewart, but I mean, too. just in a, in a film that has Cary Grant, it's pretty rare for him not to be the object of everyone's attention mm, and yep. it, mm -hmm. the pyramid working up to him. Yep. He's rarely a bit or side yeah. role. Holiday is sort of that sort of same prism you speak of, mm -hmm. yeah, right there. And so it's really interesting to see him competing with someone, someone also equally as charming as Jimmy Stewart, for the attention of someone who doesn't necessarily need 
to mm. pick either mm. of these two gentlemen because she's Joy. already, already engaged. engaged. Somebody else, yeah. But it's interesting to see, you know, what it is about their personas and what it is about their interaction that causes her to even question her current relationship, let alone consider either of these individuals. Well, I think the thing I like most about Catherine Hepburn is just she was a strong female presence, even oh. what seventy years ago. Oh yeah, and that's super. I mean. Mm -hmm. Women back then were much more differential to the male counterparts yeah. in terms of film parts. And Nowadays, like the role she played, she would have to wear a pantsuit. She wouldn't be allowed to wear a dress because she'd have to be that businesswoman who's showing that she can be strong. But, you know, she's a, you know, amazing actress, and this is a really well good... Well-deserved. Yeah. Well-deserved. Sadly, you know, she didn't win the Academy Award for this. I believe she ended up winning, like, two or three total. Hmm. She That's... nominated for, like, a whole slew of yeah. them total, but this was... Strangely, not one of them, and yet still Come on, one of the Hollywood, best. Get it Come on. Come on. We would be remiss if we did not discuss Sigourney Weaver, an yes. alien. Mm -hmm. Probably, arguably, one of the most popular female mm -hmm. lead characters ever yeah. in all film. One of the best lead characters, regardless yeah. of gender, in Pro film. Probably one of the best well rounded female. Uh, lead character, I think main just, characters. just best action stars. Period. I mean, I can, she, oh, she has to go up there in the list. I mean, uh, let's see, you know, Rocky, etc. Mm -hmm. Like she is just a badass, no, definitely action character. Yeah. I mean, talk about you know somebody who's put in a situation well beyond their mm -hmm. uh, experience and preparation, and very much a well written character too. Because mm -hmm. essentially, I mean, usually when you have like a heroine, you have kind of some idea where they have to overcome some kind of male driven like heroism to be considered heroic and this is nothing about like ripley's strengths is mm. because she is or is not a woman it's all about her just personality and it's yeah, she's badass and all of her sense of gender is not like forgotten but it's more supporting her strong personality than it is you know attracting or trying to give excuses for which is often stuff that happens in hollywood you kind of go like oh she's her baby's in danger so she right. becomes better person you know right. like that's not necessary for a woman to be strong like, no. you know? <laughs> and it's amazing to think that she was not nominated for best actress i mean it's it's a fantastic role as you said and it's, I mean, you got to give a lot of credit to Ridley Scott, mm -hmm. who's been one of the more progressive directors in mm -hmm. terms of Hollywood. You know, there's another film of his that we'll talk about in a yeah. little bit that we hit on a little while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's also said, you know, Blade Runner 2 is going to have yep. a female protagonist yep. in it. So he's definitely not shied away from having female leads. Definitely. It's, I mean, it's a great franchise, mm -hmm. one of the best in history. I mean, sadly, mm -hmm. that fourth one was not so good, but... I'm one of the... I'm a... I'm a alien resurrection apologist. Are you? Yep. I'll I'll go through three. I even I even like I love three, three. But I love three, I'm a three and I like apologist. four. Four. I don't think okay. three needs apology. I think people were just expecting something to be bigger than aliens. But either well, way, I think we'd... the start of three is kind of shite. Well, okay. considering where aliens ended up, but you know, kind of a cop out. Yes. Yeah. But you know, nevertheless, you gotta give a shout out to uh, Seattle, one of Seattle's favorite. Son, so to speak, Tom Skerritt mm, mm -hmm. in Alien as well. That's so, right. Yeah, just saw him the other day. Nice. We didn't get to talk to him. Oh, you well, didn't like well, fist bump or anything? No, nah, that would be awesome. But <laughs> no, nevertheless, Sigourney Weaver, one of the greatest female actresses mm, mm -hmm. of our, definitely of our time, of yeah. all time as well. So, got gotta gotta talk about mm -hmm. Alien. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to hear some other people's thoughts about it. Mm -hmm. Again, another one that we had to include was Meryl Streep. Yeah. What we were going to include was really a coin toss. I yeah. mean, she's got 17 Academy Award nominations, I believe. Jeez. Three wins, I believe. Well done. Yeah. Well done. It was, it was really, really a toss-up in mm -hmm. terms of what... Uh, was the film to pick. Mm -hmm. I chose the most obvious one, which was the one from 1982, which was the, great, <laughs> of course. the greatest year on record. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, certain people's birthdays in that year just happened to be awesome. No, 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 uh, no specific. Disagree. Yeah. Oh. Uh, nevertheless, she also won Academy, her first Academy Award for Best Leading Actress that year. Mm. So that's, that's good on her too. And we are talking about her role in Sophie's Choice. Mm -hmm. This is the film about a woman who survives the Nazi concentration camps, yes. moves to America, 
gets caught in sort of a love triangle, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's not that's not like the crux of the problem in the film. She's got a husband who has mental problems. Mm -hmm. She has a really complicated history as part of her surviving the mm -hmm. concentration camps that continues to haunt her. What a surprise! Someone who survived the concentration camps. Didn't necessarily have a good time. Well, it's 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 even more complicated than that because her father was a Nazi sympathizer, right, but yeah. she kind of went against those uh, leanings. Leanings, mm -hmm. yeah, and ultimately that really backfired on her. Backfired, 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 <laughs> backfired on her. We'll go with singular. That seems the most appropriate mm -hmm. tense. Yeah. And she is put in a situation that probably is one of the most difficult choices, yeah. hence the title, <laughs> yeah. that anyone has ever had to make. And Meryl Streep, with Just Cause, is arguably one of the greatest yeah. female actors up there with Catherine Hepburn mm -hmm. to ever grace the silver screen, mm -hmm. so to speak. And this is one of the prime examples of oh, why she's so great. Yeah. And it's great to realize it's what, 31 years, 30 years 30, ago? Exactly. 30 years ago. And I mean, she's still going strong, still knocking them out of the park. It's, it's such a powerful film. I mean, you, you think, you think there's so many things that are so challenging about this mm -hmm. role, you know, dealing with death, dealing yeah. with Nazi, yeah. dealing with World War Two, dealing with... You want to make a hard drama. PTSD, you know. Toss in Nazi concentration camp and you've pretty much got guaranteed hard well, to watch And the thing drama. that's interesting about this is this is all post that. I mean, she's doing mm -hmm. like PTSD mm -hmm. essentially right, before yeah. PTSD was like a thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it would have been easy to be the woman in the concentration mm -hmm. camp trying to survive this, but this is all her so caught up in these decisions that mm -hmm. she made that haunt her to this day, haunt her to that day, mm -hmm. I guess you would say, mm -hmm. not to this day, uh, <laughs> because it's 30 years ago that the film came out. <laughs> but it's, I mean, obviously, she was the highlight of it. got nominated mm -hmm. for writing, it got nominated for, you know, all sorts of things, and she was the one thing that it ended up winning for. And But deservedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And great supporting roles as well with Kevin Klein and Peter McNichol, who try to keep up with <laughs> her awesomeness in this role. Which is so hard to do yeah, in I mean, general. Yeah. Like I mean you all can't. you can do is run behind. <laughs> Seriously, like and it's it's one of those things that there's a reason why to this day you almost it's a cliche, but you nominate her for whatever role she's in every year because <laughs> yeah. she's always so good in whatever mm -hmm. she does that you basically have one slot every year basically <laughs> reserved reserve for Meryl Street for, for whatever yeah. she does. So <laughs> One of the more interesting uh, films of the 1980s as well mm. was Broadcast News from James O. Brooks, uh, yes. the writer-director, uh, starring the fabulous trio of Holly Hunter, William Hurt, and Albert Brooks mm -hmm. as a trio of newscasters in a love triangle in a major broadcast situation mm -hmm. with uh, Holly Hunter as the producer, mm. as is... James, or was it um, Albert Brooks, mm. with William Hurt as the anchor, yes, who's sort of rising right. through the ranks, and it's, I mean, Brandy has said it's, I believe, her favorite, one of her favorite films of all mm. time, one of her favorite performances of all time, and again, you know, sort of, it's funny to think back in terms of the Philadelphia story, mm -hmm. this is a lot of parallels to that in terms of the strong female mm -hmm. lead who doesn't need any of the men in yeah. the film, but it's she is the point of fixation of mm -hmm. everyone's attention, and she's, you know, caught in terms of, you know, career and uh, love mm -hmm. and um, yeah, just... Hmm. Interesting to think about that, that whole love triangle aspect, and if that's... I, want, I would be interested if Brandy or any other uh, female listener, viewer, etc., to, you know, do I wonder if the the idea of the love triangle, the two men and the one woman, is an empowering or demeaning, like? Well, I, th I think the thing through. that's empowering is that it's not the cliched romantic comedy of like mm. you know boy meets girl, mm. boy or girl meets other boy or boy mm. meets mm -hmm. other girl or whatever, and yeah. then they end up together in the end. At the end, the end of the movie, it's it's messy, it's mm. it's real, and you know, it's. It's better for her in a lot of ways hmm. that she walked away and did her own thing hmm. as opposed to just 
falling into a re relationship like she easily could have done you know every everybody walks away um changed by hmm. the events that occur in the movie but nobody is uh Nobody makes it out, sort of, sort of, okay. so to speak, clean. Gotcha. They, they're all sort of like you know, they all. Nobody gets away scot free. <laughs> well, they, none, none of them end up together. Ah, oh, spoilers. Okay. I mean, it's 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna spoil. It's not really a big spoiler at this point, but yeah, you know, they meet sort of after the fact. You know, hmm. I believe it was nine months or whatever down the road, and sort of like briefly talk again. Hmm. I believe it was Albert Brooks in particular and Holly Hunter, and you know, it's it's. It's I, and that's one of the things that's really become popular in modern cinema. There's a whole slew of films that were I saw during SIF that did this, and sadly, it's not a more common thing hmm. where you know people don't choose the easy mm. relationship out mm -hmm. or whatever. They sort of they pick their career, or they, mm -hmm. they 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 you know do whatever, yeah. and it's sort of I think that kind of thing is empowering. Yeah, in terms I can of see the role. that and, definitely. You know, again, you know, she's she's the one running her own situation. She's not deferring mm. to the men in this predicament. And Fascinating. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. I haven't seen it. She's nominated, sadly, lost to Cher from Rinstruck, which really? I personally think you could argue, but, you know. I think that's easily arguable. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not a Cher enthusiast. I'm sure there are people out there that would probably jump on me for that, but, you know. Uh, amazingly, I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? No, seven? Seven nominations. Wow. Didn't win one of them. That is a travesty. That is. That's if, sad. That's sad. That's just sad. I mean, if anybody, you know, uh, should have, you know, 2020 awards mm. look back, <laughs> this is definitely one of those films that feels like it I think should. you got to do your own because I think you found enough in the last, like, five months that you've yeah, been like, this, really? Yeah, between this and really? the 2020 Razzie Awards, yeah. like, I'm doing both <laughs> versions. Like, this is clearly a worse film than that, and this is clearly a better film than that, yeah. Just oh, do, hindsight. It's 2020. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Wait, I get it now. That's why they... <laughs> yeah, it's comes, it comes I was like, what does the year 2020 yeah. have to do with... Okay, I'm, I'm done. We spoke of him before. Mm -hmm. We're following up again. Yep. Ridley Scott. Yeah. Champion of female empowerment. Mm -hmm. Another prime example of yeah. him doing it was from the early 90s that we briefly spoke about, mm -hmm. you know, a week or two ago with mm -hmm. Prometheus, was Thelma and Louise. Yes. The story of two women... Mm -hmm. uh, Gina Davis and Susan, Susan Brandon, Brandon, who are involved with the killing of a rapist, mm -hmm. who then go on the lam. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's it's such a beautiful relationship between these two. I'm trying to remember, isn't Susan Saran? So isn't one of them also running from her husband, like or semi already, or is that just part of them going on the lam? I um, I yes, forget. there's a housewife. Yeah, there is. Okay. Either yeah, way, yeah. continue. Um, but you know, it's really a story about female friendship mm -hmm. and how far yeah. you're willing to go for that. Definitely. I mean, the male portion of the story totally takes a backseat to mm -hmm. these two strong female leads. Yes. I mean, that is the driving force mm -hmm. of the film and it's not, it's I mean, there's, there are men in the movie but they're mm -hmm. not at yeah. all like a uh, driving force in the same way that Thelma and Louise are. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's more than just that. It's, it's, it's that their relationship to female mm. leads how mm -hmm. often do you get that as yeah. the sort of lead of a movie and mm -hmm. such that everyone else takes a backseat to them yeah it's it's very uncommon particularly in a very mainstream release mm -hmm. with major actors involved it's i find it enjoyable that you use things like driving and backseat as imagery when we're talking about Thelma and Louise just because they go on the lamb in a 66 <laughs> thunderbird yeah i mean it's a road movie in its own way <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely yeah. a road movie a road movie with no one in the backseat it's perfect it's, just... it's and it's it's interesting because they're challenging roles for these mm -hmm. two actresses i mean we're talking rape we're mm -hmm. talking murder we're mm -hmm. talking, I suppose you would classify as suicide. Mm. So, mm -hmm. there, I mean, it's in some ways almost like a Romeo and Juliet thing without the romantic mm. underline mm -hmm. there of, of two people who sort of go through these intense... Let's just say star-crossed people rather than yeah. lovers. Yeah, <laughs> who go through this intense relationship and ultimately, I mean, I guess they're not, you know, coming from opposite yeah. sides of tracks, but they're hands are forced mm. by forces without with outside of mm -hmm. them and they ultimately have to take a, a ser serious reactionary yeah. moves in dealing with it and and they ba and the, the 
as you said, because it's a movie about friendship, the best part about it is how they support each other in this decision, where they're both, they both have their doubts about what they've done and worries and concerns over it, but they both use each other as a, as like a strength to yeah. continue and on I mean, rather than like fighting. It's not like the buddy, co you know, that's the problem when you have like buddy comedies or buddy movies is that you have like two people who are supposed to get along that spend a lot of time bickering or fighting or disagreeing. And this is not that sense. This is very much like, and I mean, this rape is always a tough thing in film. I mean, a lot of times it's handled uh, inappropriately. A lot of times it's sort of gratuitous, gratuitous. And, you know, it, it could have been easy to paint Thelma and Louise as any number of characters, you know, victims because mm -hmm. of the rape, uh, villains because mm -hmm. of the murder. Reactionists, like they're not thinking about it, they're right. just reacting. Yeah. And yet I feel like they're still, they still come off as strong females. Definitely. Both, as we said when we spoke of it before, uh, Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis were nominated for Academy yes. Awards for lead females. Mm -hmm. How often that occurs, probably yeah. very, very rarely. Yeah. Not only like... I mean, just, yeah, it's just crazy to think of that you would have two perform two titular performances in a film that were both nominated. Sadly, neither of them won. Probably, like we said, splitting that difference, most likely. True, but the other one who did win that year is one that we're going to talk about as well, well actually. Hey, look at that. Yeah. How we're coincidental. The winner of the 1991 or 90, 1991, 90 yeah. day two Academy mm -hmm. Award yeah. for lead actress. Mm-hmm. Was bum bum bump Jodie Foster. Oh, Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, hard to criticize her for winning that. That's a pretty badass female role as well. Yeah, here's where I make a lot of enemies. Clarice Starling. Is... I hate that movie. Really? Why? I hate it. I hate it so much. Why? And, I, and it's so nitpicky, and I Why? understand it's nitpicky. I was never a horror person as a kid, so I never saw this when it came out. Okay. I knew plenty about the sure, cultural sure. relevance. I knew I'd seen clips, etc. I, in like t early 2000s, I was thinking like, hey, you know, I've never seen that movie. I should see it. And a friend of mine said, have you read the book? Hmm. You should read the book. Gave me the book. I read the book. Loved it. Was so excited to see this movie I hadn't seen 10 years after the fact. Watched it. So upset. Really? What about? So upset. Because essentially the book, in a shortened version, is all about the intelligent investigative power of Clarice Starling mm -hmm. and how she puts stuff together and leads her okay. down this sure. weird rabbit hole and eventually sure. finds out something. Essentially, the movie takes the entire second act of that investigation and just rips it out and has a scene at the end of the first act and a scene at the beginning of the third act put together to the point where when I was watching the movie, I paused, rewound it, and thought I had fallen asleep. So I was like, <laughs> how can it jump from that to that? That's a huge middle of portion of the book. I will, I will concede that I think she's a stronger uh, character as the series goes on. For instance, mm -hmm. Hannibal. I think mm -hmm. I think she's really, once she becomes a much more experienced detective. Mm -hmm. And, and no, no criticism criticism on Clarice Starling being a strong lady. I just have this... She She's she's she's, she's much more inexperienced in this one. I'll, yes. I'll concede that point. I'll, and there are some things that she stumbles through. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like she's very strong in terms of dealing with, say, Hannibal Lecter. Oh, yeah. Like, I think that's one of the best parts of the movie. Oh, I yeah. feel like the scenes with her and Anthony Hopkins are amazing. Yeah, I think and, Anthony Hopkins is, is amazing in that movie. I'm not so... And I, I, like, I like how, you know, she ultimately is the one with the vision and the knowledge and mm -hmm. the understanding to get this case closed yes. when all the male detectives mm -hmm. are, like, going off on their own. Mm -hmm hunches and whatever yeah. and it's her that's like oh who, what's your name oh you're mm -hmm. buffalo bill okay mm -hmm. nice to meet you sir mm -hmm. obviously this is yeah <laughs> not and exactly how it went but interestingly enough like that's actually one that's actually the relatively close to the transition i'm talking about when she discovers the dress in the closet mm. and realizes that the dress is being made the person's making a mm -hmm. human some Suit, clothes yeah. and then she gets the call from her boss that they found where buffalo bill lives that is the entire middle of the book. The difference between those two points. Her figuring that out and slowly piecing together things and getting to a point where they even mm. think it's Buffalo Bill and then tracking down Buffalo Bill. So that's well, just it's, Greg's nitpick. It's a, it's a shame that the they day. didn't do, go that entire length. But, you yeah. know, I mean, I thought Anthony Hopkins was wonderful. Ted Levine as mm -hmm. Buffalo Bill was really interesting. I also just don't get her accent. I think she does a great acting job, but I think her accent is the most inconsistent accent yeah, I've it's, seen. Yeah, it's a little weird. I, I mean, I just I think I, I like that she's a strong female who, oh, definitely. you know, despite being the new kid on the block, mm -hmm. really pushes everyone mm -hmm. and 
finds things that nobody yes. else has seen. And, you know, I, I, I think as the series goes on with Hannibal, as I mm-hmm. said, that she becomes a much more badass thing. I wish Jodie Foster would have played that role mm-hmm. instead of Julianne Moore. Yeah. I mean, she was okay, but I would have no, preferred yeah. Jodie Foster. Yeah. I, th- I mean, Jodie Foster is one of the best actresses mm-hmm. in film, and this is definitely... Yeah, my, my criticism is... I mean, I love the character of Clarice Starling so much because she's definitely that other side of the investigative coin where you have a woman who... Who it's not just that she's afraid because she's a woman. She has traumatic flashbacks of her own childhood mm-hmm. that she overcomes when going after a hunter of women. I mean, that's pretty hardcore. Well, not only right that, there. but like, she goes against like possibly the greatest mind yes. in film history, yes. Hannibal Lecter. Mm-hmm. She goes mano a mano mm-hmm. as him and she holds her own yeah, against like him. That and alone is pretty awesome. And the fact that she <laughs> takes down Buffalo Bill all mm-hmm. by her all by her lonesome. Yep. So pretty badass for that definitely yeah greg's <laughs> problems with the f- film aside still pretty badass greg wah, wah, wah. <laughs> single Cry tear, me a tear. <laughs> continuing on the badass female trend we're going to the realm of quentin tarantino yes. who has done a few badass women in his mm-hmm. own right over time we're going with one of the first ones he did though mm-hmm. and that was jackie brown yep probably his most underappreciated movie uh definitely his probably his least popular i would yeah. say it, it's it's amazing to think quinn tarantino and an overlooked film but this yeah. is definitely great yeah R- because Resurre- I mean, people were kind of like man jackie brown didn't seem that great i'm like are you did we watch the same movie? jackie brown i love jackie, jackie brown. brown's a great film greatly overlooked because the, his other stuff is so yeah. profoundly amazing yeah it's it's great but i mean when you're comparing to like pulp fiction and reservoir it's, dogs res- it's, it's, like, it's hard it's hard yeah. it's the bar it's like i was talking about recently with alan you know fernando morales uh did city of god and mm-hmm. it's like that's one of my favorite films of all time for him to reach city of god level mm-hmm. it's it's gonna be a miracle if he mm-hmm. does anything that good in his career and it's sort of the same with quentin tarantino yeah. he's one of the few people who consistently puts out great products yeah. but to reach you know the level of a pulp fiction yeah. is a profound kind of like thing. what you were talking about in relation to joss whedon where it's like some of the stuff yep. you've done is so amazing that yep. anything that even falls slightly below that bar seems mediocre yeah even if it's <clears> great <throat> So we're talking Pam Greer, yeah. the resurrection of her career, mm-hmm. so to speak. She had sort of fallen below the wayside, yeah. and as he's done for many people, uh, Quinn Tarantino brought her back. Mm-hmm. Famous black exploitation actress, yeah. if you didn't know. Amazingly strong female mm-hmm. woman. She is sort of put in the position of being in the middle of a crime caper here, mm-hmm. so to speak, between the cops and the crooks. Yes. And she's... Kind of a courier stewardess, yes. I believe. Yeah. Both, actually. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Courier slash Slash stewardess. And she's sort of manipulating both the crooks Mm -hmm. and the cops. And she's sort of one of the few really in the know about everything that's going Mm -hmm. on. She's playing everyone. And that's, I mean, one of the best things about... I think of Yojimbo for some bizarre reason. Somebody playing both sides and wins against them both. Yeah, I mean, she definitely... I mean, that's literally as far as it goes into that that comparison. (laughs) I can can see that now that you mention it. Uh, But she's... Such a wonderfully gifted actress mm-hmm. that you know she does both the drama, the tension, the mm-hmm. action, the comedy, everything so uh, smoothly. Mm-hmm. She transitions between all these she's facets such a of the character. Charismatic actress. It's just amazing. It took like something like this to bring her back that she wasn't just back on her own. And you know it's a shame that she didn't get an, a nomination mm-hmm. for it. Sadly, Robert Forrester was the only one who got a nomination hmm. for the entire film. Interesting. But interesting choice. I, I mean, I think you could credit it with really resurrecting her career. She's mm. been, she pops up every now and yeah. then ever since then. But this is definitely one of the pinnacles of mm-hmm. seeing her in that resourceful, uh, creative, mm-hmm. tough female character. Yeah, and- it's just also interesting to watch her character change through the course of the movie to go from someone who is like already at the end of their rope, you know, and, and, and da- not at the best part of their game and kind of downtrodden and almost to the sense of being a victim and what mm-hmm. happens to her with both sides and rather than you know letting rolling over for any of that she takes the stance to beat both which is yep. pretty i mean that's a pretty brave thing to decide that you're going to beat criminals and the police simultaneously because you don't want to be taken advantage of yeah i mean tarantino is definitely as with like kill bill and whatnot mm-hmm. he's had some strong females and Elmore Leonard, the writer of this, hmm. which it's based upon, has hmm. had some interesting female characters as well. You know, L.A. Confidential oh, yes. comes to mind. Get Shorty mm-hmm. has some interesting female yeah. characters in it. So hmm. it's 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 definitely a very underappreciated film. Yeah. And hopefully maybe people will go check it out simply because we're talking about it here. Let's hope. 
We're gonna go uh, more recently, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. True Grit. Yeah. The based on the novel by Charles Portis. Mm -hmm. a story of a girl who sort of sets out to get revenge on the man who killed her father. Yes. Mm -hmm. Led by the youthful actress Haley Steinfeld. Mm -hmm. There are any number of sort of similar roles that we could have talked about. You know, Jennifer Lawrence, Winter's Bone, mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth Olsen, Marcy, Marthy, Mary, Marlene. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the one of the best examples because she's so young and yeah. so strong in her role mm -hmm. here that she's really the driving force of the movie. I mean, yeah. you've got you've got classic actors like let's see Jeff Bridges mm -hmm. and Matt Damon yeah. and Josh Brolin, and yet she's standing toe to toe with yeah. all of them and pushing them yeah, to do this. Never falls to the wayside, both in the way it's kind of actually shot and put together, and also just her acting performance. It's never you know. It's never Jeff Bridges and Matt Damon going mono a mono across the fire and her in the background. I mean, no. she's if they're going at it, she's the third party well, in that. She just... she's pushing both of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, both of them are sort of reluctantly going into this. Yeah, they're and basically she... fighting each other because of her. And she's essentially <laughs> saying, you know, if you you guys don't do this, I'll do this myself. Mm -hmm. Sort of chicken. What a great way to demasculate a man in the old west to be a ten to twelve year old girl and to tell these big tough bounty hunter types, if you can't do it, my little twelve year old girl self is gonna do it. All about myself. Yeah, okay. and she, she. I mean, she, she. I mean, she definitely is put in danger through mm -hmm. the whole thing. But she really, from beginning to end, she doesn't cop out and skip mm -hmm. out on the sort of the adventure quest, whatever yeah. you want to go it to find Josh Brolin. And, and you just imagine the amount of work she does on her own mentally, even before she actually sets out on the trip. Just like the. You know, the negotiations with the man who owns the horses, her negotiation with Jeff Bridges, like the, where she lives, her taking out this whole revenge quest on her own. She's, she's dealt with the death of her father. Yeah, I she's mean, she's the one who ran the farm back in, bef when he wasn't around. I mean, this is like a strong kid before the revenge pack. This is a pretty... Sadly, there are a few weird things about this. Number one, why Haley Seinfeld wasn't nominated for a lead actress. Mm. I mean, she was nominated for a supporting actress, which... Hmm. I'm glad she got any nomination, yeah. but she definitely was one of the lead characters yeah, in the movie. I, I, would, I, I would agree with that. Uh, sadly, in terms of her acting nomination, she lost to Melissa Leo for The Fighter. Melissa Leo's a great actress mm -hmm. in her own right. It, I mean, I'm not going to necessarily argue against her winning because she probably should have won for other stuff mm. as well. <laughs> Haley Seinfeld, equally deserving, though. Mm -hmm. I, I really would not have bat an eye if she had won. Yeah. I mean, it would have been an amazing thing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably but, why it didn't happen, sadly. But this is also sort of funny in terms of the entire film. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten nominations. Wow. And it's zero really wins. Whoa. Yeah, I believe this is the year King's Speech and everything oh, yeah. was beating it mm -hmm. out. I mean, it seems wow. set up for every wow could have could have gone the coen brothers way they were oh, yeah. big deal and at it, the time. It, it was killing i don't that's just crazy that it didn't hmm. sort of a shame but you know also in the original one the kid who plays uh the role of maddie ross maddie ross is equally charming in her own weird endeared way I'm looks like justin bieber also definitely curious to see what Haley seinfeld does mm, going mm -hmm. forward so. yeah Anyway, brings us to this Friday, the 22nd of June. Pixar's newest, Brave, mm -hmm. is coming out. The story of a princess who is sort of in the position of being um, married off mm -hmm. by her parents. Sort of their... Was it... Uh, Scottish? Irish? Well, I'm just saying, what's the process of marrying the daughter off? Oh, like, yeah, just uh, arranged marriage. Arranged marriage. Good call. There you go. High five on I that. I was like, dowry? Yeah. You, that, uh, arranged, mar for? arranged marriage is the one I'm looking for. <laughs> she's basically, they're trying to set up an arranged marriage mm -hmm. for her, and she's a strong female who mm -hmm. doesn't feel like she needs protecting or someone to mm -hmm. take over. She's Voiced by the ever awesome Kelly McDonald. Yep. Big fan. Uh, with her mother, voiced by Emma Thompson, who's pretty, oh, wow, yeah. pretty awesome in her own right. I think I do that. And it's sort of her basically showing that she can protect and lead the mm -hmm. kingdom in her own right. Mm -hmm. And it, it, look, it looks like a lot of fun. You know, mm -hmm. it looks like she's going to have to um, undo a curse as part mm -hmm. of it. I, yeah, I, I believe, without getting too heavy into spoiler-y things that I may have read, there's she has a chance to make some kind of... Like I want, like um, Tom Can Tom Hanks' big kind of wish mm. kind of thing, where it's like I want to change my fate, mm -hmm. and I think it causes undue problems that she has to reverse, from what I've gathered. 
I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Mark Andrews has definitely been getting a lot of the publicity in terms of directing it. Mm -hmm. But got to give a shout out to Brenda Chapman, who directed and mm -hmm. co-directed and co-wrote it with Mark Andrews. So both of them are co-directors. Let's mm. not just give one director credit. <laughs> uh, I don't know why she hasn't gotten more attention. I'm very curious to see what she does going forward. Mm -hmm. She's really really interesting lady. If you follow her on Twitter or blogging mm. or whatever, she's really interesting. And I mean... It's first original Pixar production a few years now, and yeah. glad to see them taking on fe strong female leads. Yeah, Hopefully, they'll just go into another sequel. Yep. Hopefully, they'll continue this on mm -hmm. going forward. I don't know. Um, at the day that this was currently filmed, I there's been some early buzz from people who've seen it, and it's been nothing but positive. I've seen a lot of. I've actually heard a few people who said they like Tangled more. And this is more Disney like than Pixar like, so I don't know what. Interesting. I'm looking Tangled's forward. Tangled's pretty good. Tangled I'll, is I'll awesome. Give... I agree. I definitely agree with Tangled being awesome, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. Still, I think mm -hmm. people are probably being curmudgeons or something mm -hmm. about that. I'm, well, I'm... you know, you think about it. The kind of people who are seeing it now are people who are paid to be film critics, and sadly, good reviews don't usually sell. So, you know, there's got to be somebody out there who's like, "Wait, everyone's saying The Brave is awesome. How can I say it's bad? So I'm the one bad." Review. You might, you might be, you might be true there. I, I can't definitely say it because the people are like rich from the Seattle film blog. So <laughs> I don't. If you have any hate mail, Sorry, direct Rich. it to him. Yeah, we're gonna throw you under the bus on this one. But yeah, that's right. Let us know what you think about uh, both. Uh, let's see, brave. Mm -hmm. F female roles in general, mm -hmm. you know, let us know your favorite ones. We'd yeah. love to give some shout outs. You know. Oh, definitely. There's obviously a crap so ton many, we missed. So many that we could have <laughs> talked about. And, and just picking iconic female actors would have been enough. We probably would have just like, just listing them would have been 35 minutes. Just, easily, just easily. <laughs> so let us know your thoughts and join us next week for the DVD picks for the week of the 26th. DVD rundown. DVD rundown. We don't pick. We don't pick. We Come run. On, Spencer. We run down. <laughs> run down like The Rock. We run it down. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you would be Sean William Scott in this case. I'm okay with that. I don't, be I don't know if I want to be The Rock. Too late. I'm Stifler. <laughs> See these guns? It's gun show like The Rock. Anyway, let's know your... people's eyebrow more, Spencer. I can do, I can do one eyebrow. <laughs> let us know your thoughts on MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, mm -hmm. Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Whee! Phone number, 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip. We're on Roku, we're on Miro. And check in at Get Glue. Not gonna say anything on that one? Good. They know what I'm thinking. Yeah, they know what you're thinking. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the size of style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.